Hi, I'm Andrew Skirka with Sierra Designs. I'm going to show you how to pitch the High Root Tent. The High Root has a unique but straightforward pitch. It's great that you're watching this video. Afterwards, go out in your backyard, pitch it once or twice before you take it out into the backcountry. The High Root comes with, with eight stakes. You're going to need at least six. I recommend eight so you can porch the doors and have a really nice crosswind through the shelter. If you are expecting really windy conditions, you might want to take all 10. You're also going to need two adjustable length trekking poles. They can have the lever style lock or the twist locks. I would discourage the use of fixed length trekking poles such as this one here. You're going to struggle to get sufficient tension on the tent if you have a trekking pole like that. To start, we're going to go ahead and pitch the fly. And that's ideal because if it were raining right now, all of our stuff could be staying dry inside of our backpack while we're setting up the waterproof part of the shelter. Inside the stuff sack, you're going to find three different things. You're going to find a bag, bag of steaks, you're going to find the fly, and you're going to find the inner tent body. I would recommend just stuffing all of these things in the stuff sack when you're done. Um, don't bother trying to roll them. I'll also point out that uh, we intentionally made this stuff sack oversized because when your shelter is covered in dew or even frost and you're having to shove it back in there in the morning, it's incredibly annoying. So this will give you a little bit of extra space. The High Root has a perfectly rectangular footprint. So roughly lay it out, and then before you go any further, make sure that your side doors are zippered shut, and make sure that the side release buckle at the bottom of the door is engaged. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stake out all four corners. I have all four corners staked out, but before I go any further, I'm gonna I want to walk around each corner and make sure that the corners are perfect 90 degree angles and that the, the guy line is approximately at a 45 degree angle off of that angle. So let's just look at this one here and I can show you what not, this was not what it should look like. So this is greater than a 90 degree angle. And then this one over here, the pull angle is about a 90 degree angle, but the pull angle is not at a 45. So I'm going to retension this a little bit in order to get all my corners perfect. I now have my rectangle staked out. I have four 90 degree corners with 45 degree pull angles. Before I go any further, I want to just think one more, one more thought. If I want a lot of clearance uh, on the bottom, between the bottom perimeter of the shelter and the ground, I'd want to loosen these stakes up a little bit and increase the distance and just give some slack here. If I wanted very little clearance, like in stormy weather, I'd want to make sure that these guy lines are nice and tight and the stakes should be close to the shelter. It's finally time to go vertical. At this point, I'm going to grab one of my trekking poles and I'm going to adjust it to start to about 48 inches or 120 centimeters. Chances are it's probably going to end up being longer than that once the shelter is finally pitched. Come over to one of my side doors, open up the zipper. I'm going to put my trekking pole tip in first, and then the grip goes right into this apex. You'll notice that there's a webbing with a grommet at the end. My trekking pole tip goes right into that grommet. And you'll notice that there's all the slack in the shelter. So I'm going to suck the slack out by increasing the height of my trekking pole. And you can also tighten up this grommet using the ladder lock buckle. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie this off with a stake. And this, this is the ridge line, and it should go at a 45 degree angle to the side of the shelter. And it's really important that you have this thing really secure because this ridge line takes a lot of tension. Okay. So now I've done one side, I'm going to go over and do the other. We have the fly pitched at this point. We're going to go ahead and move on to the nest. Okay. So the nest has 
adjustable lengths of cord with a plastic hoop on all four corners. And you can most definitely use these if you'd like to put tension on the nest. And you go ahead and clip the loop into the corner of the fly. One, two, three, four. And then to um, tie it off to the roof, you have a side release buckle. This is the male end. There's a female end right near your trekking pole. You go ahead and clip that one. Clip this one. And then you can go, ahead, go around if you'd like and you can make sure that there's uh, adequate tension on the floor of the, of the inner tent. Now the truth is that if you put a full size sleeping pad in the bottom of that inner tent, you wouldn't have to bother clipping all of them. That sleeping pad would provide plenty of tension on the bottom. And then it's just a matter of clipping these two pieces into the apexes. So the fly looks good. The inner tent is pitched on the inside. One thing I'd like to show you here is how to porch the doors. This is a really nice feature in the event that you have some rain, but you still want to remain or retain some ventilation we went ahead and, and installed these adjustable guy lines on the very corner. And if you'd like to add a little bit more height to the door, you can use a stick just to porch it like this. And this is why I recommend taking stakes number seven and eight so you can do this. So you've got a bunch of actually extra space there. And then you have five inches of protection off the side of the shelter because of this awning vent. If you feel like this is a little too exposed, you can porch the door halfway use this side release buckle in order to take tension off the zipper. And again, I can go ahead and tension this out, tighten this up if I, if I need to. And then finally, if it's really stormy, just go ahead and close the side door entirely. And you might want to consider leaving the top door open. It'll stay protected by the vent but you'll end up with a little bit of airflow through here as well as through the upper mesh in the vent and then along the bottom perimeter. Okay, a few tiny features to wrap up. First, these awning vents. If you, if you want to maintain ventilation in the awning, make sure that they are sticking outwards like this. On the inside here, to help hold the trekking pole in place on the side door, we installed two Velcro cuffs, one here and there's one right up behind the awning stick. And then finally, if you're in really stormy weather, you might want to consider this extra tie out. We included a stake and line for it. I'm um, just tied off right here and it would tension out this way. And that will provide some extra tension and stability in the event of strong winds. This is the night glow. This comes with the high root tent. It's really convenient because it provides a lot of nice light. You just take your headlamp and stick it right in there and pull this pull the cinch cord. It's also very easy to remove if you don't want to carry the weight. That's how to pitch the high root tent. As I said earlier, it's unique, but very straightforward. I don't think it will take long for you to master it. Really looking forward to seeing you out in the trail with this.